Amen. Bless the Lord again, everybody. It's good to be with us another time, you know, sharing in the word of the Lord. You know, God is such a good God, and he's worthy of our praise and worthy to be praised. Uh, you know, I love him with all my heart. I, I want to serve him. I want to please him. I want to, to make sure that my life is pleasing unto him. You know, and, and at the end of the day, because the ultimate goal is that I may get to heaven where I can see him in all his glory and, you know, be able to just worship him and give him glory in heaven as he requires. My prayer, though, is that all of us, you know, you know do our endeavor best to, to make it in. You know, we want to make it into the rapture. Amen. I take also this time out to greet each and every one of us that, you know, is tuning in tonight. You might be in Jamaica, you might be overseas, you know, wherever you are, we greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, and we pray God richest blessing on your life. And we want to continue with what we started a couple of weeks ago. And before we go any further, I would like to invite us, wherever you are, to just join me in prayer as we breathe a small word, you know, and ask the Lord to have his way. Can you bow your heads? Father, again, we come before you. We want to bless your name. And we want to give you thanks another time for life, for health, for strength, for the opportunity to be here sharing in our word. Lord, we come before you knowing, great God, that you are author and you are finisher of our faith. God, we present this Bible study to you tonight. Jesus, we ask God that you intervene. We ask God that you inspire. We ask, great Jesus, that you will Fill my mind, fill my spirit with what you want your people to hear. We pray, Holy God, that your perfect will might be done. We ask God that you touch these words, anoint these words as they go forth, that it will accomplish in the lives of your people what you want it to accomplish. We pray, great Jesus, that you have your way in this service and anoint us, Jesus Christ, in this Bible study tonight that we will get to do your will. We thank you for hearing. We thank you for answering. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So we have been talking about the will of God, finding and abiding in the will of God. And we did say that, you know, we are supposed to seek the will of God. You know, the scripture that we have been Looking at is taken from Genesis chapter 15, 1 to 6, and Genesis chapter 16, 1 to 6. Before we read the scripture, I would like to say to us that I believe that there are some folks that have questions that they would want to ask. I am going to tell us that we can ask our questions in the chat, or we can email our questions to Faith Chapel, that is F-A-I-T-H-C-H-A-P-E-L, fam1 at gmail.com. That is Faith Chapel, fam1 at gmail.com. Our media team will be gracious enough to, to pick out all these questions, compile them, and next week when we close off on this topic, the will of the Lord, finding abiding in the will of the Lord, we will be able to answer the questions. That is if there are any questions. Amen. Bless the Lord. So the scripture is taken from Genesis chapter 15, 1 to 6. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abraham said, Lord, God, what will thou give me, seeing I go childless, and the steward of my house is this Eliza of Damascus? And Abraham said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine here. 
And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be in thine hair, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine hair. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted to him for righteousness. Now let us jump down to Genesis chapter 16, 1 to 6. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, bare him no ch children, and she had an handmaid, an Egyptian, whose name was Hagar. And Sarai said unto Abram, Behold now the Lord that restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go in unto my maid. It may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarai. And Sarai, Abram's wife, took Agar, her maid, the Egyptian, after Abram had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan, and gave her to her husband, Abram, to be his wife. And he went in unto Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. And Sarai said unto Abram, My wrong be upon thee. I have given my maid into thy bosom. And when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. The Lord judge between me and thee. But Abram said unto Sarah, Behold, thy maid is in thine hand. Do to her as it pleaseth thee. And when Sarah dealt hardly with her, she fled from her face. So we continue. And as usual, we do a bit of recap. You know, there are certain things that I mentioned last week. You know, and I want to re-emphasize some of them, adding a little bit of points to some of them, you know. <clears throat> and it's important that as children of God, we have been saying it, that we make sure that we try our very best to live our lives according to the will of God. We did say that God has a plan for our lives, and we quote the scripture so many times, Jeremiah 29, 11 and tonight, again we are going to look at the scripture and the Lord said, I know the plan that I have for you. I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Thoughts of good and not of evil. Thoughts to give you an expected end. So the Lord himself has a plan for us, has a plan for our lives. And it is important that as children of God, we try to find the will of God as it pertains to our life. As children of God, it's important that we seek to find the will of God, find the plan of God for our lives. You know, I, as an individual, I would rather to know that if I face hard times, that I am in the will of God. I do not want to make my own decision and go through the repercussion, go through some penalty, penalties, so to speak, because I made my own decision. I would rather to know that I did as the Lord instructed me to do. And, and, and if bad times come, bad times come. But I do not want to do my own will and then... Bad times come. And I said, Lord, if, it, if I knew, I would have followed your will. When you find yourself in the will of God, when bad times come and trouble sometimes come, and you know that you are in the will of God, you have a certain confidence to know that, look here, I am in the will of God. And anything happen, I am in the will of God. For example, as married folks, when we know that we are in the will of God and bad times come, we can look beyond the bad times and say, look here, I know that this thing can be fixed. I know that God is going to fix this because I am in the will of God. Then 
there has to be a willingness doing on, on, on both parties to fix it. But at the same time, when you are in the will of God, there is this confidence that God is going to fix it. God will come through and God will work it out because, you know, I have not heard, I have not gone off a tangent and do my own thing. So it's important as children of the Most High God that we do our endeavor best to live to please Him, live according to His will. If, if God is in control and if God knows our beginning from the end and He designed a pathway, He designed a plan for us, wouldn't you want, knowing the greatness of God, wouldn't you want to make sure that your steps are aligned within His plan? I would want to make sure. You know, it's a terrible thing to fall in the hands of God. And I do want to make sure that my steps are ordered by the Lord. We said last week that the key to discovering the will of God as it pertains to our lives hinges on two things. One, and this is a desire for you to live to please God and not yourself or anyone else. The second key we said it's our ability to understand the nature and purpose of God for our lives, which is found in the book of Jeremiah 29, 11. When we look at one, the desire for us to live our lives, to please God and not ourselves or anyone else, it is extremely important if we are going to do the will of God, if we are going to seek him, find his will and abide in his will, it's extremely important then for us, bless the name of God, to live our life pleasing to God and not to anyone else, nor to ourselves. Abraham knew God's plan. When God called him in Genesis, God, um, Genesis chapter 12, God told him, his plan. Then in Genesis, further in Genesis, God reiterated this plan to him. And he knew that God had a plan for him. He knew that, you know, the will of God was for him to be the father of many nations. The will of God was for him to get a child, have a son, a heir, and that this child would God would establish his covenant with his child. So Abraham knew that God had a plan. But Abraham, in wanting a child so much, was willing to try what was suggested to him by his wife. And the Bible says in Genesis chapter 15 that we just read that Abraham took Agar, sorry, Genesis chapter 16. Abraham was given Agar by his wife and he took Agar and he went in unto her and a child came. The union brought forth Ishmael. Ishmael was the son of this bond woman after the will of man. And that is very important. The, 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 this son was after the will of man. If we look throughout scriptures, you're going to find that when, as men, we exercise our will, that it tends to go away from what God requires of us. Oftentimes, when man made the decision, and, and, and our decision is an expression of our own will, and when men make their decision, you're going to find, if you go through scriptures, that oftentimes the decision is far away from what God wants it to be. So the Bible says that Genesis, in Genesis that Abraham wanted to please his wife. He wanted to please himself. And because of this, Abraham took the bond woman for a wife. And they bear a son and his name was Ishmael. 
And hear what the Bible says in Genesis chapter 16, 12 about Ishmael. And he will be a wild man. His hands will be against every man. And every man's hand against him. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. This son of the bond woman. The Bible says that he will be a wild man. His hand will be against every man. The descendants of Ishmael are the, are wild people according to the Bible. These are Arab and these Arab men are against every man. And every man's hand is against him. And it is the Bible that is coming from. Isaac, on the other hand, was the son of a free woman after the will of God. I want us to note the two passages clearly. That the will of man produced a son. And this son was of a born woman. And the son would be wild. And his hand would be against every man. And every man hand against him. But here we know the Bible talks about the son that is after the will of God. And God himself said in Genesis 17 and 19. And God said, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed. And thou shalt call his name Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant. And with his seed after him. So though the will of man wanting to please himself, wanting to please his wife, went in and produced a child, God was still not willing to establish his covenant with this son. It's important then as people of the living God that we do our endeavor best to abide in the will of God, find the will of God, abide in it. Matthew, in Matthew 16, 24, the Bible speaks of Jesus talking to his disciples. And he said this, if any man will come after me, hey, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. In other words, let him totally deny himself or let him disown himself, take up his cross and follow me. You cannot please yourself and please God at the same time. If you want to please God, you have to disown yourself. If you want to walk in the will of God, you have to disown yourself and make sure that you are completely sold out to him. We must remember, and we said it last week, that we must remember that there is a law within our members. That when we want to do the will of God, something presents itself that would have us to go against the will of God. Paul put it this way, when I will do good, evil presents itself. So you cannot please yourself and at the same time please the Lord. Because Isaiah 55 verses 8 and 9. So we are saying to us that there are two things that will help us to understand the will of God, to identify the will of God as it pertains to our life. One is that we have to, to deny ourselves. We cannot please ourselves. We cannot please anyone else and at the same time please God. So we have to please God and then everything else takes second place. Isaiah 55, 8 to 9. He says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts 
higher than your thoughts. So it might be that we think that we are in the will of God. But just when we think that we are in the will of God, it might just be that we find out that, look here, you are not in the will of God. God wants us to please him. God wants us to find his will and to abide in his will. And if we are going to do that, we have to remember that his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. So when we think that, yes, I am in the will of God, it might not be. And when, before we close off, we are going to look. Because though we mention that David prayed and in each instance God answered him, we are going to find out that there are times when we pray and ask God and say, God, what is your will? We are going to find out that there is no answer coming forth. We are going to find out that sometimes the answer takes so long. And then we are going to look at the importance of faith in finding the will of God. Sometimes we're going to have to just move by faith. And while we move by faith, we see God opening the door. But we have to remember that his thoughts are not our thoughts. Neither are his way our way. Because as high as the heaven is above the earth, so are his ways. And his thoughts higher than our ways and higher than our thoughts. So we cannot please ourselves. We cannot please anybody else. We must please God if we want to discover his will for our life. And Abraham pleased his wife. Abraham pleased himself. And he brought forth the son of the born woman. The second key to discovering God, God's will is our ability to understand the nature and the will of God for our lives. The Bible in Jeremiah 29 verses 11 we should hug up this scripture as people of God. It says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Say the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. I want you to read it one more time. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Say the Lord, this same God that created the heaven and earth. He said, and he's saying to you through the scriptures, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Thoughts of peace, not of evil. To give you an expected end. We quote the scripture many times. But are we aware that the key to knowing God's will for our lives lie Therein, he said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. So irrespective of what you do, what you don't do, how far you deviate from his will, how far you deviate from his plan, or how messed up we think we are, his thoughts, is the Bible, you know, his thoughts towards us will never change it is always thoughts of peace it is always thoughts to prosper us it is always thoughts to give us irrespective of what we do very important because as we go down further you are going to realize how important the scripture is to everything irrespective of what we do his thoughts towards us will never. It is not like us. That boy will have a friend and the friend do us bad. And even as Christians, our thoughts towards that person change. The plans that we have in regard to that person change. I want you to know tonight that God is not like man. 
is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. And if he says that he is going to do it, then he is going to do it. He said that his thought towards us are of peace and this peace is peace continually. Not of evil. And it is to give us an expected end. What does he mean by this expected end? This expected end is not the end that we expect for ourselves. It is not the end that you expect for yourself. So, often time, you might sit down and you might think that this is what you want to accomplish out of life. You're seeing yourself up on the hill looking down, you know, especially in the nights, looking down at all the lights, looking at the beauty. And you see yourself with a car, you see yourself relaxing and you're dying a nice peaceful death. But this end that God is talking about is not the end that you think. This end that he's talking about is the end that he thinks of, that he desires for you. This end that he designed from before the foundation of the earth. For you, this is the end that he is talking about. It is according to the end that he has ordained for you. To get a better understanding of this, we need to look at Romans chapter 8, verses 28 through to 30. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. To them who are called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknew, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. That he might be the firstborn of many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified and whom he justified them he also glorified the word predestinated there is a key word and it comes from the greek proidzo which means to determine before or to set the destination from the beginning for jeremiah the prophet the destination was set for him to be a prophet to the nations. In the same way, there is an end. This end for Jeremiah was for him to be a prophet to the nation. God has set an end for your life and all his thoughts and expectation concerning your life are towards making that end come to pass. The decisions that you make might lead you astray. Might cause you to turn your back on him. And even when folks are in their backslidden state, and God know that some folks not going to make it back, his thoughts towards them remain the same. His expected end towards them remain the same. And this is just the kind of God that we serve. When we recognize that all God does for us, and all is the time he spent leading us, beating us through the Holy Spirit. It is so that the plan that he has for us can be fulfilled in our lives. Knowing this, it must stir us. Stir something inside of us. That would make us want to do the will of God. 
irrespective of what we do. It doesn't change God's plan. doesn't change his thoughts towards us. Even when we hurt him, we sin against him. What kind of God is this? Even when we do wrong, his thoughts towards us will not change. So your life may not look like it is going towards the God-desired end. But he is constantly thinking about it for you. Do you know that when God looks at your life, the thought that occupies his mind towards you is what? Is he or she doing? Why don't he or she submit to my will? What else is there must I do to get them to submit to my will? God wants us having this plan for us from before time began. He wants us to walk in his will. The key to understanding the, the, the will and the purpose of God for our life lies in the scripture. I know the thought that I have for you, the plans that I have for you. Thoughts to give you an expected end. When you live for God and abide in his plan for you, your life, you are going to find out that your life and existence manifest the thoughts of God. You are not a mistake. Your birth was a, not an accident. It was a manifestation of divine thinking. God talk up, thought about you in eternity. One can say you are God's idea. Not your parents. You are God's idea. It therefore means that your very life on earth should be a construction of the thoughts God have for your life. We mentioned that Joseph, Joseph went through many things. And at the end of the day, Joseph became prime minister. At the end of the day, Joseph became prime. It was rough. He did not See what, what, what God was doing. And it was rough. I believe that he pondered to himself many times. Why do I have to endure this? Even when the man stand up for righteousness. And say how can I do this thing and sin against God. You, you think that you would be in the will of God to stand up for righteousness. But then he was thrown in prison. And him being in prison was the will of God. At the time he was going through it, he might not have known that this was the will of God for his life. But at the end, he was able to say, you meant it for evil. But God meant it for good. His brothers sold him into slavery. That did not take God by surprise. God didn't have to deviate his plan because Joseph was now sold into Egypt. But it was God's plan for his life. And I'm saying to us brethren that if it's the will of God and you're knowing the will of God and it might be rough Comfort yourself knowing that you are in the will of God. Comfort yourself knowing that you are in the will of God. We need to understand that God is concerned about every aspect of our life. And he is committed to our success spiritually, financially, educationally, and emotionally. His objection comes when we focus on other things rather than him. His objection comes 
when we have too much de desires for this thing and we are willing now to come out of the will of God just to get this thing. God is not pleased when we do that. And I'm saying to us as brethren that we need to make sure that whatever we do, whatever move we make, that we are in the will of God. We also mention that if we go outside of God's will, Genesis chapter 16, 16, 5 and 6, if we go out of God's will, there are going to be consequences. Right? Sarah said unto Abraham, My wrong be upon thee. Sarah now began to blame Abraham. You know what is going on between me and Hagar. Do something about it. She said to him, I have given you, I have given my maid into your bosom. And when she saw that she conceived, I was despised in her eyes. We said last week that despise means to regard with contempt or to scorn. Agar scorned her. She couldn't give Agar orders anymore. Because no, she was pregnant. And she thought that, yes, because I'm pregnant, it's, it, it's about me now. So we said last week that there was ongoing arguments that was taking place in the house. Abraham made the decision. His wife came up with the idea, told him, and he made the decision and said, yes. Abraham did not go to God and say, Lord, would you have me to do this? So that is why we said earlier on that you can't please man. We have to please God. And if we get a suggestion as individuals, we have to know, know how to go to God to say, God, is this what you would have me to do? And let me just say this. Right now, I am in the process of, you know, doing some business and, and going through the lesson. I am very fearful, you know, I'm very, very fearful because it looked like it not working out. But I am still, I don't want to make the decision by myself. Or off my own will. I want God to, to lead and, and God to direct. And I am praying. Say, look here, God. Just going through the thing. I am so afraid. Let me say it. I'm so afraid. I don't want to do it off my own will. Look here. I rather God. I rather to know that I make the decision according to the will of God. Go through some rough times. Than to make the decision off myself and then the, th the rough times that we go through now I say boy look here why me never follow the will of God so Abraham made the decision and then he had to live with the repercussions so we said that there was argument between them swearing now took place in the house and here what verse 6 said, And when Abraham could not take it no more, verse 6 says, But Abraham said unto Sarai, Behold, thy maid is in thine hand. Do to her as it pleaseth thee. And when Sarah dealt hardly with her, she fled from the, her face. Sarah was so hungry that when she dealt with Agar, Agar fled from the house. What transpired in the house was a direct result of going outside of God's will. I put it to us, brethren. Sarah told Abraham, let us do this. 
And when it was done, it caused argument. It caused swearing. Sarah deal with Agar, Ashley, this maid that she had for years. Oh, glory. Because of this, she now deal with her harshly. Probably the maid didn't even know this side of Sarah before. Abraham got frustrated and said, look here. She's in thine hand. Do with her as you feel, please. And I told us that this is where the, the, the burden, the burden comes from. This is where my, my treading of walking this life, of doing business, of, of, of doing everything, of living, comes out. Because I want to make sure that I'm in the will of God. I am saying to us as saints tonight that a lot of things that we go through as saint is as a direct result of us disregarding the will of God and doing as we please. The Holy Ghost prompt us. The Holy Ghost talk to us. God himself talk to us. Through the words, through the preacher. But yet our minds are made up. And we go against, oh glory to God, the will of God. And some of the things that are happening to us, some of the things that are happening in our house, is as a direct result of us going outside of God's will. Some folks got married. And the signs were there. God was talking to them, you know. Don't get married. But folks disregard the voice of the Lord. Still got married. Some folks migrated because the grass is sown like the grass is greed on the other side. Right now, even because of COVID, a whole lot of people want to come back to Jamaica, you know. And the things that some folks go through is as a direct result of them disobeying the voice of the Lord. Disobeying the will of God. I could go on and on, but the bottom line is that even though God is still saying to somebody, even though God is still talking to an individual and saying, look here, you know my will. Why are you so determined to go outside of my will? These plans, these thoughts that I have for you are centuries old. Millennium old. They are from before the foundation of the earth. They are good thoughts that I have towards you, but you are still hell-bent and going outside of my will. God is gentle. The Holy Spirit in us is gentle, and he will not force anyone against his or her will. The most I wanted to be king over Israel. We said it last week. He wanted to be king over Israel. But the people saw how the other nations have kings. And they desired for themselves a king. And, if you, and, and we said the scripture for that was 1 Samuel 8, 1 to the end. It was not God's will for the people to have another king away from himself. But the people said, look here, give we a king. The Lord said to Samuel, tell them the ways of a king. Samuel, tell them the ways. One chapter Samuel used and tell them the ways of a king. But the people said, look here, we no business, give us the king. God said to Samuel, they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me. They went outside of God's will for them as a nation. And because of this, they were led astray. They were rooted out of their lands. Their lands were left in ruins. 
Because they, look here, I am saying to us that when we go outside of God's will, there will be repercussions. The kingdom was divided. They were led astray. They were removed from their land. David also in 1 Chronicles 21, 1 to 4. The Bible says that Satan stood up against Israel. Look here. And the finding the will of God will not always be easy because Satan will stand up in your way and he will stand against the will of God. And brethren, we have got to spend the time now to find the mind of God because uh, we, we, are, we, we are wrestling also against principalities and powers and these forces will stand up against us. Finding the will of God. And we have to spend the time. So, so, so in David said to Joab and the rulers. Rulers of the people, go number Israel from Beersheba even to Dan and bring the number of them that I may know it. And Joab answered, the, the Lord make his people an hundred times so many more as they be. But my Lord the king, are they not all the Lord's servant? Why then do it, my Lord? Require this thing. This was now Joab, you know, saying to the king, look here, it don't make sense. You, you go, go take a census, you know, don't number the people. Why he will be because to trespass Israel. Continue. Nevertheless, the king's word prevailed against Joab. Wherefore, Joab departed and went throughout all Israel and came to Jerusalem. This should not have been because God said, and we read it earlier on, God said to Abraham, look here, I will number your, your seed will be numberless. They will be innumerable. He said, go out, look up underneath the heaven. Tell me. If you can number the stars. Abraham said no Lord. He said well that is how I'm going to make your seed innumerable. So David now trying to count God's people. Was an error. Was a sin. And let me point out to us starting from right here now. That when you go outside of the will of God. It's not a soft thing. Is sin we sin when we go outside of God's will for our lives. So David number the people. Joab, he sent Joab to go take a census. Joab did not count all of the folks, you know. In verse 6. The Bible says, but Levi and Benjamin... Counted he not among them. For the king's word was abominable to Joab. But Levi and this, he got a command from the king. And because the king's word was abominable unto him, he did not count Benjamin and Levi. And he went to David and he gave David a number. David didn't even get the true number. But for doing this, God was displeased with David and he smote Israel. I am brethren. I am saying to us that when we look at the word of God, we need to fear, we need to tremble. Because if we go outside of God's will, God is going to take action. It might seem all right for now, but God is going to take action. There will be repercussion. And God smote Israel. 
is after David cry out when he see the angel kill him. And God said, what would, you, what would you have out of these things? He said, look here, I don't choose him. I rather to fall in the hands of God. And God said, all right, I will send pestilence among the land. God kill out some folks in Israel because David erred. I want us to know that God will for our life includes the man or woman that we married, we said it last week, the career, the ministry. Some folks all they want to do is preach. But what if God wants you to teach? Some folks like some things. But what is it that God wants you to do? You know, God can't have you to start out to be a drummer. But what if God wants to move you into teaching his word, into preaching his word? What if God wants God want to move you now from a drummer to carry you around the country to evangelize? When it comes to ministry, which is extremely important because some folks, lead me Holy Ghost, some folks, they put the car, they put the house, they put the partner over the ministry. But I want you to understand that seeking God for a ministry is also very, very important. I want you to know that what you sow in the kingdom God is going to reward you for it. So look here, James 4, verses 17. I, I, I really want you to look at the scripture. To knowingly disregard God's plan for your life is sin. Years ago, doing a bit of self-disclosing now, I probably you might have heard me mention it before also. Years ago, I sought the Lord. 2013, when, when my co-workers, 2011, 12, 13, when all of my co-workers surrounding me, all of the co-workers, those that I started working with with 2007, the, all of the co-workers co just getting through to go to Canada. And there came a fever over me. I'm going to say, yes, my wife was not so enthused. I'm going to say, yes, Canada. I applied, I got the recruiter's number from Canada, I called so much time, I do everything within my power to get through to go to Canada. But at the same time, I was praying and I'm saying, God, look here, even though I want to go, the money is nice. Because when these guys told me how much they were working, I'm willing to go to Canada. I'm going to try to justify it to him. I say, look here, God. We can, I, I can't go. And I can't win souls over that side. But I know the thought. I know the plan that I have for your life. And when I prayed, I'm going to say, God, I want to go back to school too, you know. So it's either school or Canada. And the Lord told me, in no uncertain terms, go back to school. And, and going to school was another miracle in and of itself. That is another story for another time. But what I'm saying is to bring us to this point here in James 4 verses 17. Let us read it. Therefore, to him... That know it to do good 
and doeth it not, to him it is sin. So, so can you imagine now, God said to me, go back to school. And I said to God, say, God, yes, but look here now. The grass is greener on that side. I am going to Canada. Can you imagine? Him that know it how to do good. Him that know it how to do the will of God is good, you know. And we establish that from Jeremiah 29, verses 11. Thoughts of peace. To give you an expected end. The thoughts that he think towards us are good thoughts. So to him that knew it how to do this good. And do it it not. To him it is sin. So if I had gone and do that thing. I would have sinned against the Lord. So if you know that what you are about to do is not aligned. To the will of God. Don't do it. If you know that you did not hear from God. Don't tell folks that look here. You hear from God. And I hear from God. And this is. No you didn't hear from God. You believe that you are in the will of God. Which we won't touch on. But you didn't hear from God. And God has a way of working things out for us when we desire above everything else to know his will so though our faith will take us down a particular path god will work out things for us and close the door if we desire to do his will close the doors and open the ones that he wants us to walk through and if we, 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 we go by faith and, and go with this principle, and we're going to get into that probably next week when we close off. But James 4, verses 17. Look at Luke. Let us look at Luke 12, verses 47. So if you know that what you are about to do is not aligned to the will of God, don't do it. If you don't hear from God, wait until you hear from him. If you move by faith, make sure that above everything else that you want to do the will of God. And God will open the doors that he wants you to walk through. But let us look at Luke. And that servant, which knew his Lord's will, and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, Shall be beaten. I think that one need to soak a little bit. Because if we walk out of God's will and think we're going to get where we're not going to get away. And that servant which knows his Lord's will. And prepared not himself. Neither did according to his will. Shall be beaten. With many stripes. There will be repercussions. If we go out of God's design plan for our life. These repercussions. That we are talking about brethren. Are the repercussions with many stripes. I am telling us. That if we go outside of God's will for our lives. There will be consequences. There will be consequences. There will be many. And I'm saying to us as children of the living God. Some of the things that we go through right now. Is as a direct result of us. Stepping out of the will of God. And doing our own thing. To him that know it how to do good. And do it, it not shall be beaten. With many stripes. He that know it how to do good. And do it, it not. To him 
it is sin. Israel. God also has a plan for nations too, you know. And that is why it's important for us to pray that God's plan for our country will be what the decision makers embrace. Because God has a plan for our country just as how David made the decision and took up a census and God Judge the people for it. So it is. I believe that if. As a nation. The leaders not safe. But we have a, as a church. We have the responsibility. As individuals. We have the responsibility to pray. That our leaders at least. Try to find the mind of God. Before they make any decisions. When Israel arrived at Kedish Barnea, which bordered the promised land. Now they left out of Canaan. They left out of Egypt, sorry. And they went on a journey to Canaan. I think this was a couple of days journey. And they were now at Kedish Barnea, which bordered the promised land. They, were, they, they should have just stepped in to the promised land. Talking about the will of God, you know. And if you go outside of the will of God, there will be consequences. So look here. The people, when they came to the land, the border, the Bible says that they sent spies into Canaan. Numbers 13 18 to 25. The perfect will of God was for them to enter the land immediately after they came out of Egypt. These spies returned after 40 days of exploring the land. Ten of the spies had a bad report. We can't attack those people. They are stronger than we are. All the people we saw were great Size. We seem like grass upper in their eyes. Numbers 13, 31 to 33. Only Joshua and Caleb said, Let us go at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome. Numbers 14, 6 to 7. Believing the report of the ten daughters, the people lost heart and rebel. Like I said, we're going to talk about faith and the will of God. They raised their voices and wept aloud, grumbling against Moses and Aaron, saying, if we only had died in Egypt or in the desert, why is the Lord bringing us to this land? Only let us fall by the sword. And that is Numbers 14, 1 and 2. As a result of them doubting, They raise their voice and say, Why did not God allow us to die in Egypt? It brought doubt in the camp because of the report of the ten. While God's will, perfect will for them, was to just step in the land. Overthrow the folks and take the land for themselves. The people, when they look, they murmured. 
and only two of them were allowed to enter the promised land. And for that, God caused them to wander in the wilderness for 40 years. And every folks of that generation died in the wilderness. Talking about repercussion. And only two entered the promised land. In Job 10 and 14. Said if I sinned. Job 10 and 14. If I sin. Then thou markest me. And thou will not acquit me from mine iniquity. If I sin, then thou markest me, and thou will not acquit, my, acquit me from mine iniquity. Brethren, if we know how to do God's will and don't do it, it, it is sin. Job is saying that if we sin, that God will mark it, and he will not acquit us from our iniquity, which means that we will be judged. Like I said, some of the things that we are going through as children of God is as a direct result of us going outside of God's will. There will be consequences. There will be repercussions. And if we make the decision to go outside of God's will, we have to just deal with what comes. Like I said, I would rather to know that I'm in the will of God and I can operate with this confidence to know that, look here, I am in the will of God. So anything that is happening, it is because I am in the will of God. Amen, somebody. The will of God takes patience. Right? And the Bible says in Philippians 4, 6-7, Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God, and the God of peace, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and mind through Christ. So we did say, and we make mention of it last week, that you know, if we are going to really do the will of God, if we are going to see the manifestation of the will of God in our life, then it is going to take patience. We said that Abraham waited 25 years for Isaac, for the birth of Isaac. And I'm saying to us that some of the times when we set ourselves to find the will of God, find the mind of God about a particular issue, the answer might not come right away and we are going to have to exercise patience in order to see the manifestation of the will of God. Then, I want to talk a little bit about this perfect and permissive will. And there is a thin line in what we call it, in what I would call it, the, 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 the perfect will and the permissive will. And, and, and I want to explain myself because... I don't want us to think that God has two will for us. Or two plans for us. I know the thoughts that I think towards you. I know the plan that I have for you. He has one plan for us. But I just want to explain a little bit as it pertains to the perfect versus the permissive will. You know, there are many people that write on the will of God. Some expresses the view that there is only the perfect will of God. Irrespective of the wrong that we do. Irrespective of how far we stray away. There is only what we call the perfect will of God. But it begs me to ask the question. Even in the story that we read. Abraham, God told Abraham that a son would come from the, his lines and the womb of his wife. 
And even when the son of the bondwoman came, God still told him that, look here, I will not establish my covenant with him. So it begs me then to ask, why did not, why, this son that, born, that came, this son of the born woman that came, was he a part of the perfect will of God? But let us look at what the scripture says. So there are other folks who write and they express their view that, you know, there is what you call a permissive will. The perfect will and what they call a permissive will of God. As we have been saying, I want you to follow me carefully now, you know. As we have been saying, God has a perfect will, a perfect plan for our lives. Each and every one of us that comes on the face of the earth, God has a perfect plan, a perfect will for us. His plan that he designed for each of us is from before the foundation of the earth. This plan is like a road map. There might be mountain tops and there might be valleys, twists and turns. However, it is the perfect will of God. This is what he designed for our lives. Irrespective of the part that we choose. This is his plan. And we make sure, I make sure earlier on that, you know, we talk a little bit about it. That irrespective of what we do, God has this plan for us. And it is the key for us understanding the, 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 the will of God for our lives. As it pertains to permissive. Permissive mean what you permit. In other words, it is what God's it is what God allows. What I'm saying here is not that God has two wills for us. He does not have two wills for your life. But we must understand that God has made man free will moral agent. And God is not going to mess with free will. Anytime God begins to mess with free will, it is not free will anymore. So, what I would consider as the permissive, it is God allowing us to express our free will. Let me put it this way. If the road map that God has for us, this road with a twist and turn, if we were not able to make the decision, to take a left turn when God did not want us to make a left turn. Then we would not have free will. And because we are made free will moral agents. God permits us to express this will. But it is not that God have or has two will for our lives. God just have one thing for our life. And this is the same plan, the same thought that he thinks towards us. And that change is not whether you go to the left or you go to the right. God has the same thing in mind for us. So permissive does not mean that you are going to get a lesser blessing. Some folks believe that if you come out of God perfect will and make your own decision that you are going to get a lesser blessing. I don't read where the Bible says that he is going to give us a lesser blessing. It's either you're blessed or you're not blessed. Like I said, it doesn't mean that God has two will for us. Nor does it mean that your decision caught God off guard. It simply means, so when, when, when we talk about permissive, 
And this is where it stops. God allowing you to make your decision. Even when he has a road map for you. It is simply means that God allowing you to choose. If we choose to disobey God. The path we choose is ours. God doesn't strike us down. God doesn't force us and say you have to do this. But he allows us to make our own choice. Whether we obey or we disobey. He simply lets us live the path we choose. And the consequences that come along with it. So if we look back at the passage. God promised Abraham that he would be the father of many nations. And we, we, we've been saying that. That his seed would be innumerable. God's design was for the seed of the promise to come through Abraham and his wife. But Abraham went in unto Agar and God allowed it. God could have said, my will, my perfect will is for your, the child to come between you and Sarah. But they made their decisions and God allowed it. It was not that the decision that Abraham made caught God off guard. Because, and, and look here, how oh God work it like this, I cannot tell you. I can just find little things in scripture and I can just tell you how it go. From the beginning, God said, leave your father house and I am going to make of you a great nation. I will bless them that bless you, curse them that curse you, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And he said that I will make your seed innumerable. So the birth of Ishmael, look here, like I said, I don't know how God do it. But even when we make our own decision, God has a way of working it to be a part of his own will. I can't explain it to you. I'm just saying it to you like how we see it in scripture. The, 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 the perfect will of God, it is just that when we talk about permissive, we're saying that God allow man to make his decision. But you making a decision don't mean that you can't. God off guard because even when Abraham made the decision look at this when Abraham made the decision and Ishmael was born God's plan for the seed of the promise did not change and God's plan to say I will make your seed innumerable did not change as a matter of fact, it seems like because this Ishmael was born, it seems like the seed would be more innumerable, so to speak. Just a, just a way of saying. But what I'm saying to you is that Abraham and, and, and Sarah made their decision and God just worked it out to be a part of the bigger picture that he had for Abraham. Let me, let, me, let me hurry to say this. This is not a license for us to step outside of God's known will for our life because to him that does that, it is sin. Paul, the apostle Paul would say, God forbid. So it is not a license for us because we know that God now is able to work out the thing. He allows us to make the decision, but he's able to now work out the thing so that it becomes a part of the big picture. It is not a license for us to step outside of the will of God. God forbid. 
It means, therefore, Romans 8, verses 28. How God works it like this, I can't tell you. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. To them who are the call according to his, look here, saints of God. I cannot tell you how God works it like this, I don't know. And that is why some of the writer says, God only have one will. But I just want to tell us that God allows us to make our own choice. And that is the only reason why I would consider something as permissive of what he, of what he would allow. But God is able now to work everything according to his master plan. So when Abraham and his wife came together and said, look here, we're going to cause you to marry Agar and then Ishmael came. It worked together as a part of God's plan. The thing though is that they had to live with the repercussion. And we mentioned some of it earlier on. But we did not mention this one. Let us look at Genesis chapter 21, 8 to 13. And we're going to read this one. This explain, you know, a, 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 a little bit more into the situation. So we said that there was a tussle in the house. Sarah threw out Agar. Agar was met by an angel. The angel said, go back and submit yourself. Now, let us pick up the story in Genesis 21. So, Agar came back. And the Bible did not mention anything more of what happened except for this. The child grew and was wind. And on the day Isaac was weaned, Abraham held a great feast. But Sarah saw the son whom Agar the Egyptian had born to Abraham was mocking. And she said to Abraham, get rid of that slave woman and her son. For that woman's son will never share the inheritance of my son Isaac. Look what verse 11 says. It says, The matter distressed Abraham greatly because it concerned his son. This son was Ishmael now, you know. But God said to him, Do not be so distressed about the boy and your slave woman. Listen to whatever Sarah tells you. So, and let me just interject. You know, say some husband don't even want to hear anything that the wife have to say. But God tell Abraham here, so look here. Listen to what your wife say. Because it is true Isaac. That your offspring will be reckoned. I will make the son of the slave woman a nation also. So in the very passage that we read earlier on. In Genesis 12. He said look here. I will make of thee a great nation. But here in the passage now. He's saying that I will make of this slave, the son of this slave woman, a nation also, because he is your offspring. 
This here tells us also that the, the, the intention and God separated you. Saying, oh God said, look here. The will that I had for you from the very beginning was with Sarah. And it was with Isaac. But because you did your own thing and this son came, I will also now make of him a nation. God allowed him. I hope we, we can, I hope I kind of explain the point a little bit clearer that folks might understand. So early the next morning, the Bible says that Abraham took water and he took food and he sent them away. I want us to understand that the children of Israel are from the dis are from are the descendants of Isaac. The Arabs are the descendants of Ishmael. And up until today, the offspring of two brethren cannot see eye to eye. Which is still a part of the repercussions. Because someone stepped outside of God's perfect will. I want us to understand, brethren, that it's important for us. To find the mind of God for our lives. Find the mind of God for the things that we do. Make sure that we abide in the will of God. Make sure that we abide in the will of God. God has a way, like I said, to just let our mistakes be a part of the grand scheme of things. He does not change the plan. He does not change his will for our life. It is just that he allows us to make our decision. I would want to tell us that with free will comes with, with responsibility. And if with responsibility, we have got to then make sure that we do our endeavor best to make the right decision. To make the decision that the master has in his plan for our lives. Like I said, there might be questions. You can write the questions in the, the chat. We will answer them next week. If you rather to email them, you can email it at faithchapel farm1 at gmail.com. That is F A I T H. C H A P E L F A M one at Gmail dot com. God bless us tonight. Next week we close off and we look at how faith works in the grand scheme of the will of God. The, 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 the will of God is is an interesting topic and, and I want us to know that. If we step outside of the will of God and we know that we're stepping outside of the will of God, to us it is sin. And with sin, there are repercussions. The Bible says that we will be flagged with many stripes. I then implore us, I then encourage us to make sure that we seek to know God's plan and do our best to abide in it. God bless you tonight. In the name of our Lord Jesus. Just bow your heads while I pray. Father, we want to bless your name. We want to give you thanks. We magnify, we glorify you tonight. We thank you, great God, for what was said. Lord Jesus, we believe that we have followed your will. And we pray, great God, that these words would have encouraged your people. It would have encouraged both safe and unsafe. We pray, mighty God, for everyone that is tuning in for that individual who might 
be going through a real rough time. Great Jesus, uh, help them to recognize that even in your will, there are troubles sometimes. But nevertheless, once we are in your will, we can have this confidence to operate, to move. We pray that you will build their confidence, build their faith, that they can move even though the season is rough. We pray that you will bless each and every one of us that tune in, and even those that will see this, this, this lesson in years to come. We pray, mighty God, for our country. We ask you to look at what is happening. The crime, mighty God, it, 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 it seems as if it's just spiraling out of control. Lord, we ask as your people tonight that you will breathe upon our country again. Great God, that you will restore peace to our land. We pray, mighty God, that the crime and violence, we speak to the spirit, great God, that is, Lord, wreaking havoc, great Jesus, in our communities. Lord, we pray tonight, Jesus, that you will intervene, that you will break the, the back of the spirit in the name of Jesus. And you will cause some of these young men, mighty God, who, who, who the devil has fine things for them to do. You will cause some of them, great Jesus, to put down the gun and to find better things to do with your lives. Lord, we pray tonight that you will guide, you will protect each and every person that is called by your name. And we pray and give you thanks. We ask that your will be done in our lives as we desire to do your will. We thank you for hearing today. We thank you for answering. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. Amen. By way of announcement, remember there will be missions prior meeting this Saturday morning under the tent starting at 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. I'm going to ask that all missions worker if you have the time available i'm going to ask you to come out come under the tent and i'm going to ask you to come and talk to god about the souls of men if you are interested in winning souls you have to first talk to god about the souls and i i want to implore us as we close off tonight to just remember find and abide in the will of God. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen.